ആവശ്യങ്ങൾ എന്നുള്ള നിലയ്ക്ക് ഇപ്പൊ തന്നെ പേരെടുത്തിട്ടുള്ള ഈ മഞ്ഞളും ഇഞ്ചിയും ഒക്കെ കൃഷി ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു കൃഷിക്ക് തുടക്കമിട്ടു അതുപോലെ അതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ടാണ് നമ്മൾ ഈ വെബിനാർ രാത്രി വെച്ചിരിക്കുന്നത് അപ്പൊ നമുക്ക് ഒരു ചെറിയ തിരുവനന്തപുരം ജില്ലയിലെ ജില്ലാ ആശുപത്രി എന്ന നിലയ്ക്ക് ഒരു ചെറിയ സ്ഥാപനമാണെങ്കിൽ കൂടി ഈ ഒരു കോവിഡിന്റെ സാഹചര്യത്തിൽ ഇത്രയധികം പരിപാടികൾ ചെയ്യാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞു എന്നുള്ളത് വളരെ സന്തോഷം ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്ന ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് നമ്മുടെ വെബിനാറിന് കൊണ്ട് പ്രത്യേകത കാര്യം നമ്മൾ തിരഞ്ഞെടുക്കുന്ന ഫാക്കൽറ്റികളെല്ലാം തന്നെ വളരെ പ്രായോഗിക തലത്തിൽ നിന്ന് പുതിയ തലമുറയെ ബോധവൽക്കരിക്കാൻ ശ്രമിക്കുന്നവരാണ് അവരുടെ ചികിത്സാ മേഖലയിലുള്ള പരിചയം ഒരു സൈദ്ധാന്തിക വിവരണം എന്നതിനപ്പുറം ചികിത്സാ മേഖലയ്ക്ക് കുറച്ചുകൂടെ നമുക്കത് കേട്ട് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ അത് നമുക്ക് അതുപോലെ ചെയ്യണമെന്ന് തോന്നുക അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അത് കൂടുതൽ അത് നമുക്കത് പ്രായോഗിക തലത്തിൽ കൊണ്ടുവരണമെന്ന് തോന്നുക അപ്പൊ അത്തരത്തിൽ വളരെ ഊർജം നൽകുന്ന ക്ലാസ്സുകളാണ് നമുക്ക് ഇതുവരെ ഉണ്ടായിട്ടുള്ളത് ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ ക്ലാസ്സും അങ്ങനെ തന്നെ ആയിരിക്കും എന്ന് ഞാൻ പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കുകയാണ് കൂടുതൽ വ്യൂവേഴ്സ് അതിന്റെ ഫലമായിട്ട് നമ്മുടെ സൂം മീറ്റിങ്ങിലായിരുന്നാലും അതിനെ തുടർന്നുള്ള നമ്മുടെ ഇത് യൂട്യൂബിൽ അപ്ലോഡ് ചെയ്ത് അതിലും നല്ല വ്യൂവേഴ്സിനെ നമുക്ക് കിട്ടുന്നുണ്ട് ഒരു സ്ഥാപനം എന്നുള്ള നിലയ്ക്കും ഒരു ഏരിയ കമ്മിറ്റി എന്നുള്ള നിലയ്ക്കും നമ്മൾ നടക്കുന്ന പരിപാടികൾ ഇതിനകം തന്നെ സംസ്ഥാന തലത്തിൽ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കപ്പെട്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് അപ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ഇന്നത്തെ ഫാക്കൽറ്റി ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഡോക്ടർ കൃഷ്ണറാവുവിനെ ഇൻട്രൊഡ്യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് വേണ്ടി നമ്മുടെ അവിടുത്തെ കോവിഡ് വാരിയേഴ്സിൻ്റെ പ്രധാന നാളും വിദ്യാർത്ഥിയുമായ സബിനെ ക്ഷണിക്കുക ഹലോ സബിൻ ഹലോ സർ പറഞ്ഞോ നമസ്കാരം ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഡിസ്ട്രിക്ട് ആരോഗ്യ ഹോസ്പിറ്റലും എ എം എ ആറ്റിങ്ങൽ ഏരിയ കമ്മിറ്റിയും സംയുക്തമായി നടത്തുന്ന പതിനെട്ടാമത് വെബിനാറിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതം ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് ക്ലാസ് എടുക്കാൻ എത്തിയിരിക്കുന്നത് ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട കൃഷ്ണ കൃഷ്ണറാവു സാറാണ് സാറിനെ കുറിച്ച് പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ കോയമ്പത്തൂരിൽ നിന്ന് ബി എം എസ് പാസ്സാവുകയും പിന്നീട് പി ജി ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം ആയുർവേദ കോളേജിൽ കായ ചികിത്സ മീൻ എടുത്തതിനു ശേഷം വീണ്ടും പിന്നീട് അസിസ്റ്റന്റ് പ്രൊഫസറായി പങ്കജ വസ്തൂരി ആയുർവേദ മെഡിക്കൽ കോളേജിൽ അദ്ദേഹം ജോലി ചെയ്യുകയായിരുന്നു അപ്പോഴാണ് സാറിന് ഹെപ്പാറ്റോബിലേറി ഡിസോർഡേഴ്സിൽ റിസർച്ച് ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ടിൽ വർക്ക് ചെയ്യാൻ ഈ ഭാഗ്യം ലഭിച്ചത് ഇന്ന് ആയുർവേദ ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് സാറിന് ലഭിച്ചതിൽ വളരെ അഭിമാനിക്കാം സാറിന്റെ അറിവുകളിൽ നിന്ന് ഒരംശം ഇന്ന് നമുക്ക് ലഭിക്കുമെന്ന് ഇന്ന് ലഭിക്കാൻ ഭാഗ്യം ലഭിച്ചതിൽ ഞാനും മാത്രമല്ല ഇന്ന് പാർട്ടിസിപ്പൻസ് ആയി ഇവിടെ പങ്കെത്തി പങ്കെടുത്തിട്ടുള്ള എല്ലാവർക്കും ഭാഗ്യം ലഭിച്ചതിൽ ഞാൻ സന്തോഷിക്കുന്നു ഇന്ന് ഈ അവസരത്തിൽ ക്ലാസ് എടുക്കാനായി സാറിനെ ഞാൻ ജി ഡി എച്ച് ആയുർവേദ ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിന്റെയും എ എം എ ആറ്റിങ്ങൽ ഏരിയ കമ്മിറ്റിയുടെയും പേരിൽ സ്വാഗതം ചെയ്യുന്നു എല്ലാ ഗുരുജനങ്ങൾക്കും നമസ്കാരം ഗുരുഭ്യോ നമഹ ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് ടു ഓൾ ഓൺ ദ ഈവ് ഓഫ് ധൻതേറാസ് വേർ ദി ഹോൾ വേൾഡ് ഈസ് സെലിബ്രേറ്റിംഗ് ഫിഫ്ത് ആയുർവേദ ഡേ ആൻഡ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ ലെറ്റ് മീ താങ്ക് ദ ഓർഗനൈസേഴ്സ് ഡോക്ടർ ബൈജു കെ വി സർ സി എം ഒ ഡിസ്ട്രിക്ട് ആയുർവേദ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ എ എം ഐ ആറ്റിങ്ങൽ ഏരിയ my friend dr ashwati and other organizers for giving me a stage to share some of my thoughts on the relevance of ayurveda in covid-19 pa- pandemic especially on this auspicious day so before i begin uh, am i audible sir hello so before i begin the session yeah, okay. uh, shall i continue in english or uh, uh, a mix of malayalam and english which is comfortable um, both is okay with me ഇംഗ്ലീഷിൽ പറഞ്ഞു മതി സാർ അത്യാവശ്യം എന്തെങ്കിലും എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ ചെയ്യാനുള്ളത് മലയാളത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞാൽ കാരണം നമ്മുടെ വെളിയിൽ നിന്നുള്ള ആൾക്കാരാണ് കൂടുതലും നമ്മളെ വ്യൂവേഴ്സ് ഉള്ളത് ഓക്കെ ഓക്കെ സാർ ഓക്കെ താങ്ക് യു സാർ ഓക്കെ 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 നൗ മൂവിംഗ് ഓൺ ടു മൈ സെഷൻ ക്യാൻ യു സീ ദ സ്ക്രീൻ ഹലോ യെസ് സാർ കാണാം യെസ് സാർ ഓക്കെ okay coming to my topic relevance of uh, ayurveda during the covid-19 pandemic 
So in this presentation, I would like to take you through these following steps. That is, first, I would like to cover uh, around about Ayurvedic approach in general, how Ayurveda approaches a disease. And uh, second, second uh, uh, part will be dealing with COVID-19 and Ayurveda. What is COVID-19? What are the perspectives of COVID-19 in Ayurveda? And the third part will be dealing with the rationale of Ayush advocacies in prophylaxis of COVID-19 and the management strategies that can be adopted in management of this. Now, <clears throat> we all know that when talking about a disease, especially those uh, having an infectious nature, we deal with the epidemiological triads, that is the agent, host, as well as the environment. So the environment being a constant between the host and the host factor and the agent factor, always the host factor is put to a lot of stress. And the host factor is the deciding factor what happens due to that particular infection or due to that particular agent. And uh, the speciality of Ayurveda is that this system does not fo uh, focus only on the disease as such. It focuses on host factor to a greater extent. So in Ayurveda, we all know that the determinants of host factors are the ahara, vihara and the vicharas of a patient or uh, an individual. The Hina, Ati and Mithya Yoga of these three leads to disease and the proper combination, that is the Samyak Yoga of uh, this one leads to health. And uh, regarding the benefits of Ayurveda, we all know this one. Sostati Swasya Samrakshanam and Adurasya Yoga Prashamanam. There are two cog in the wheel of Ayurveda, two main objectives. That is, first and primary objective is maintenance of health, Swasya Rikshanam which is nearly a continuous process. Right from the birth, we are in a strive to maintain our health. So it starts from the day one till our death. And in the disease management, which is a, a more of a temporary, uh, a temporary thing, which we usually do only when we have some sort of discomfort or a disease. So these two aspects are dealt equally well with a little predominance to health maintenance. Then the key health determinants of uh, any uh, individual's health is ahara, that is ahara sambhom vastu and rogascha ahara sambhom. We all know that. Ahara determines the health as well as disease of an individual. The second primary important thing we consider is agni, which is the root cause of the whole bella and the whole metabolism that is happening inside the body. And then the virus or the age of that particular individual. And these are determined by the Dhinacharya and the Rudhucharya that we follow. And what makes this Dhinacharya and Rudhucharya more important is, if you see the Dhinacharya aspect, there are two aspects to that. One is the general aspect, wherein we, uh, there are things like Snana, Vyayama, Nidra, etc., which maintains the general well-being. And the second aspect is the health and maintenance of normal physiology of the entry portals. That is, entry portal level health is maintained by certain dinacharyas like Nasya, Anjana, Karana, Purana, Dhupana, Kavala, Gandusha, etc. So with that, what happens is the whole system is healthy. The physiology is maintained as well as the entry level barriers are kept ready for any infections or any aspects of life. And then the Rudhucharya, where uh, may, major aspects are Ahara and the Vihara. That is, adaptation of the Ahara as per the seasons. The same thing, but with some modifications in different seasons. Uh, down in the south, we don't have uh, too, man, uh, too much uh, difference in the seasons. But here, over, uh, I'm in Bhuneshwar now, we have winter. Now winter is setting in, so we have to modify accordingly. And there are certain Viharas. That is, all the Viharas that we do, in their daily life, but at different degrees. Like for example, if we tell exercise, we have to, uh, we can do more of a exercise and more, give more time in exercise during the winter seasons, but not so in the summer. So likewise, we have to make the modifications. And next important component of health is Vyadik Shamatra or Bella. Ayurveda consider all these factors when considering any disease. Let it be an origin of a Doshika, Aganda Roga or a Nija Roga. Whatever may be the aspects of uh, the disease, this whole concept is considered. And 
are the important in covid 19 that is what i want to bring to your notice that ayurveda don't focus on the disease proper as such it focuses on the whole thing the host as well as the other aspects that is associated with the host factors so these are few articles that i would that the role of my, uh, microbiota in uh, maintenance of the health this shows that uh, uh, the relation of gut microbiota in covid 19 and at different age groups and this is one of the article that is that is also pubmed index that is uh, the inflammation link and the role of nutrition in potential mitigation of covid 19 that is also uh, a covid uh, yeah, uh, pubmed index and this is another article linked with the ncds and the consequences on healthy aging so these all aspects points out to a particular thing that while considering a disease like covid 19 a pandemic that is gripping the whole world we have to not only uh, see the present situation of covid 19 we have to see the entire uh, picture in a bigger framework rather than getting a snapshot of this covid 19 scenario so ayurveda has been doing this since centuries we considering the whole aspect of the patient whole aspect of the disease considering the environment and all so as an ayurveda fraternity we have to consider the already existing pandemics or the already existing ncds or whatever it may be the present covid 19 with which we are fighting and the future of covid 19 and the future pandemics to come these are the key things that uh, we need to identify while we are moving forward so these are the two tweets that i used for a, a presentation before one is from the cdc director which says that there are more suicides than uh, and uh, overdoses than covid deaths and this is from who which states that there is no silver bullet at the moment and there might never be this is regarding the vaccine and these are dated uh, july 20th and august 20th and unfortunately or fortunately this status quo remains the same the situation is the same till now uh, from march in india since march they, there was lockdown until now there is no vaccination and there is no approved vaccination so there comes the importance of ayurveda in the perspective of covid 19 like illness so whenever a new disease comes to notice or uh, erupts somewhere around the world or especially when it comes to india then a thought comes out or discussion comes out in different areas that is that mentioned in ayurveda what it can be correlated to is there any treatment of that particular disease and there is nothing much different with covid 19 also the same things are going on and there are so many interpretations there are so many concepts that has been coming up in dealing with covid 19 so acharya charaka in ashtodhiriya chapter has beautifully narrated a quotation that most of you might be aware of that is vigara nama akushilo na jagriyat kadachana that is the quotation that gives us confidence to move forward because ayurveda deals with different pathological models wherein we can fit n number of disease entities that are not in the picture right now that will come in the future or that can evolve over a period of time so any disease developing in the future also can be clubbed or linked to many of the pathological models that ayurveda text a number if you see there are little uh, small number of diseases but we can correlate at some somewhere or other with those pathological models that are mentioned in our ayurveda classics so i would uh, rather than uh, going all out on this discussion i would like to draw your attention to some of the published articles regarding covid 19 and ayurveda so this is a case report that was this is the first non case report treated primarily only with ayurveda that is a that is from jam ayurveda case report then uh, there is ayurveda clinical profiling of covid 19 this was also a first attempt of its type and then if you move forward there is an uh, article that is an ayurvedic personalized prophylactic protocol in covid 19 and uh, there are articles that uh, adopts the treatment principles of different diseases in the management of covid 19 also and i want to highlight one thing one study that uh, our institute has taken up in uh, during the first lockdown phase that is a cross sectional study that is knowledge aptitude practice study among the 
Ayurveda fraternity throughout the country regarding the viral respiratory infections with respect to Pranavaha Sotha Vikara. Because to develop something, we need data. At that time, when COVID-19 erupted in India, there was little or no evidences or treatment experiences with our Ayurveda fraternity or any fraternity. So for that, but we have a history of treating many respiratory viral infections and other viral infections. So we took up this study during the first lockdown phase and uh, there were, and by God's grace, there was active participation, especially from Kerala also. Uh, 603 patients, for, uh, uh, Ayurveda physicians participated in that. And uh, in that finding, the dosha that can be uh, the consensus arrived was the major dosha association with uh, respiratory illness, viral infections was uh, Vata Kapha followed by Tridosha. And uh, most of them, around 90% of the respondents mentioned that there is variations in dosha predominance at different stages of pathogenesis. And when we look at the sotuses involved in these viral infections, Pranavaha Srotas was a common factor among them. And 26% uh, 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 quoted Pranavaha Srotas only. And uh, the two and three ranked Pranavaha Anoha and Pranavaha Rasavaha. And the possible Ayurveda diseases, correlatable diseases to these viral infections were Jwara, Shwasa, Kasa, then uh, some sort of Agatha involvement and the Jadekshma. The permutation combination of these uh, three or four diseases were uh, actually done by all the practitioners, almost all the practitioners in dealing with such viral infections. And the general line of treatment, those were adopted for the viral infections were from Jwara, Kasa, Shwasa and related to Acne also. So the permutation, the treatment modalities adopted were also with that permutation and combination of these three or four diseases. And uh, based on this consensus, the consensus arrived on the treatment principles adopted were uh, this one. So if we have a look at this, we uh, it is somewhat uh, syn uh, it's synchronized with the textual references. Then moving forward, the common rasayanas opted by respondents were in viral infections were Agasthi Rasayana, Cham Prasha, Dashimula Haritegi, etc. And if you have a close look at that, we there also we have we can see that relation. That is, those affecting mainly on the Pranavaha as well as Jasavaha Srotas were selected in the Rasayana groups also, especially those Rasayanas mentioned in Kasa Jigitsa. So there was a bit more uh, specific question was put forward to the respondents that uh, what was the probable line of treatment of COVID-19 illness? Because these viral respiratory illness has something similar to do with the COVID infections also, management also. So we have the experience of treating previous infections. Based on that, the consensus arrived uh, uh, based on the respondents where majority opted for a Jarahara line of treatment. And then, not surprisingly, immunomodulation was also told as one of the most important factors to be considered in treatment of COVID-19-like illnesses, followed by the Ibanabhasana. Then the treatment uh, choice of formulations as preventive, the respondents chose were Vilvati Guliga, Indugandha Kashayam, Sudarshan Kanavadi, that are the common things that we used in our clinical practices also. So, <clears throat> with a, considering all these papers and uh, the KAP with the special power of the KAP article, it can be concluded that COVID like illnesses has a Vada Kapha predominance with. Uh, in some uh, in the severe severe stages, maybe a Tridosha involvement also. Because why Vatakafa is the fever, uh, fe the three cardinal features now quoted by WHO is low grade fever, dry cough, and now it's fatigue. Previously, it was uh, fever, um, dry cough, and shortness of breath. But the based on the, the most common symptoms are now at presently fever, dry cough, and fatigue. So based on that, low-grade fever is usually associated with Nithyam Mantha Jwaram, that is Vata Kapha Jwara Lakshana. And in complicated cases or in severe cases, Tridosha Anubandha can also be attributed. And the strothas involved in that was, uh, based on the consensus, it be Pranavaha Strothas, Rasavaha Strothas and Anavaha Strothas. With due consideration to Akni, Akni, Bala of the patient, Avastha of the disease, 
voice of the patient and anubandha vyadhis like diabetes or hypertension whatever it may be the status of hojas and auba sargikata of the disease the chikitsa sutras from jwara kasa shwasa raja ekshma and principles of agandaroka and janapada damsa can be judiciously used in the management of covid 19 and the discussion on the treatment aspect i will i will be telling in the la, uh, last part of this presentation now <clears throat> what are the possibilities in this scenario ayurveda across the globe across india especially in kerala also there are three aspects where ayurveda can intervene that is the preventive aspect and post covid convalescent these are the two stages where across india ayurveda fraternity is involved in and in some states disease management also so next part i will be dealing with the ayush advocacies for prevention and the rationale and why it is why i am taking this to my presentation is as a, as an ayurveda fraternity as part of ayush department is our responsibility to know how it acts and educate the people how our advocacies work so this was uh, these were these are the ayush advocacies put forward by minister of ayush based on consensus of 16 leading vaidyas across india and uh, it covered four different aspects that is first is the measures to prevent uh, the portals of entry and uh, utilization of the mucosal routes that is by nasal applications like uh, nasya oil applications this is preventive aspect i am telling and oil pulling then steam inhalation these are the three things that are done for maintenance of the portals of entry and uh, utilization of mucosal roots because if you think nasya or kavala or steam inhalation they are using different mucosal layers that is nasal mucosa oral mucosa and steam inhalation both those mucosa our mucosal most of our kriyakramas are utilization of these mucosal roots only why it is important is mucosal barrier is the primary barrier of our body that counters all the external agents it not only lubricates these um, cavities but it produces certain secretions that are that kill the chemicals or enzymes that kills the microorganisms that comes in so by doing regular nasya or regular kavala what we do is they are the part of the nature also as per ayurveda what we intend is or we should educate people is they make their um, or uh, the portal entries clean and functional and they protect us from microorganisms then the measures uh, to relieve mental stresses especially during this um, lockdown period are the practice of yoga pranayama and meditation they has two aspects there is a physical aspects while doing certain asanas there is a physical activities also and there is a mental aspects also which helps in boosting the immunity of the body and measures to maintain the gut lung access that involves the drinking of water throughout the day hot water and we know that uh, especially in the south southern part of india and as more so in kerala we used to take hot water regularly and that has been a part of our daily routine also but in north it's little bit different and drinking hot water is mentioned as sada patya in ayurveda it is vada kapha shamana also and it helps in cleansing of the channels uh, strodo uh, rodhas will be removed and those kapha that is lena uh, vilena uh, vil, uh, the lena kaphas will be uh, liquefied and can be expelled out easily and the uses of spices and turmeric this point i want to stress a little bit i will be telling it in later slides and then the immune modulator and resinas especially the most decorated and the multi drug formulation It's like chamon flush are been highlighted in the uh, utilization uh, utilized for prevention why chamon flush is highlighted this much is one is the easy availability and second is it can be used across the age group with not much restrictions and these are some of the papers that is uh, regarding the nasal uh, medications and all we have many of our uh, colleagues and friends who are working in covid 19 uh, duties and all with pp kits over hours so by practicing nasya kavala etc during these hours that helps in maintaining the integrity maintaining the normal mucosal secretions and functions that prevents 
further infections or secondary infections due to other causes also. These are articles in support of that. And this is uh, an article that could there be a link between oral hygiene and COVID-19. That also highlights the importance that if you have a secondary small infections like bacterial infections in your oral cavity, tongue, gingivitis, etc., that can cause further issues. That is, in uh, this study states that 52 percentage of death arising from COVID-19 is often seemingly healthy individuals. That is, the causes are unknown. And these can probably be a cause of COVID-19 complications because mouth shares a common, common opening along with nose to the lungs. So any infection of the oral cavity can also act as a super infection. And as we know, if there is two disease at a time, then the prognosis naturally becomes bad. So this is a oil pulling for maintaining an oral health. That is also an insecure index one and uh, regarding what are all the benefits of oral pulling and importance of oral pulling over mouthwashes. This is, this is an article that is highlighting those importance. And this is another article highlighting the importance of medication and yoga. Why I stress on these articles is people across the globe is in search of genuine, authentic things that are needed in this hour. So once you put it on paper and publish it in suitable media, then that has more acceptability than you telling it hundreds of times. And uses of spices. This is a very, very precious gift in Ayurveda. Ayurveda when you consider the relation between spices and Ayurveda, if you see that those spices that are mentioned in classics, in Charaga it is mentioned in Ahara Upayoki and in Vagbada it is, uh, it is used in Aushadha Varga. That is, this is used both as medicine as well as food. And once a drug or uh, something is mentioned as Ahara Upayoki, it is safe for a longer period of time use. So most of the drugs, if, you, if we analyze, that most of the drugs that are acting on the pranavaha strothas or shwasa, kasa, jwara, it comes under the category of spices. And these spices, you, you can see here that if you see a spice like turmeric, whatever it may be, there are three sense organs that are uh, influenced by this. One is the visual thing, the color of that, then the nasal thing, then the tongue, rasa, gandha, and uh, drishyam. The, these three faculties are provoked by these spices and influenced. And uh, it brings a feeling of satisfaction to mind also. So may, they are the major components of medicines that are used in GI as well as respiratory tract medicine in Ayurveda. So it acts on the gut-lung axis, which is a new, uh, new area of interest in COVID-19 also, a new area in modern sense. But if you see our classics, there is a pranavaha srodhas and rasavaha srodhas. There is a direct relation because both these srodhases share a common platform or common mulasthana. That is the source of origin is the same. So the pranavaha srodhas mulasthanam is hridayam and maha srodhas. The rasavaha srodhas, their mulasthanam is hridayam and rasavahi damni. So they are interrelated. And uh, most of these spices acts on both this system at a time and simultaneously. And uh, modern peoples are now coming into consensus that if there is a symbiosis between GI and respiratory tract, it will promote health. And most of the spices that are used are Katurasa, Rucha, Divana, and Kapavadahara, and more suitable in these cases. And they are practical and very easy to use. And these are the examples that I quote. That is gut lung access. Symbiosis and COVID-19. These are articles in support of what I said. And uh, this is another important finding. This is a study conducted in across 163 countries, which came to a conclusion that in uh, low spice consumption countries, the uh, per cases per million population tested were more when compared to high spice consumption countries. And Vice versa, in high spice consumption countries, the complications or death due to COVID-19 is less when compared to low spice consumption countries. And this is a major finding as it is not only to, uh, taken part in one country, it is based on 163 countries data. So in COVID-19 like illness, which respiratory tract is infected, spices play an important role. But as a physician, as a healthcare professional, we have to keep it in mind that 
those is very very important because those determines whether it is good for you or bad even water which is considered very precious is told samisha matraya yuktam vishamanyata if you take in an improper quantity it can cause further problems for you in the future so likewise we have to advise our patient to use the spices but in a controlled manner and we should regulate who to take what and all and this is the uh, who report on boiling water it said that we should boil till it is rolling hot we have a tendency to just heat it and take we have to boil it rolling hot or even in ayurveda there are different types of pani kalpanas mentioned where we can boil it to half one third one fourth based upon the dosha predominance also ayurveda there is very much scope for that and very much scope for customizing it also because in ayurveda there are so many pani kalpanas like uh, including shundi dhanya ka banam dhanya ka ya uh, or a single shundi or even jeera uh, or uh, all the common things in south we we use padimogam daily based upon the disease condition we can modify that without any extra cost and this is and a uh, chapter of a book that tells about the health benefits of indian traditional ayurveda rasayanas and in which uh, rasayanas like amlaki trifala amlaka rasayana trifala chavanprash etc were studied and they came to the conclusion that rasayanas not only have a single dimensional effect there are multi faceted and multi dimensional aspects to the rasayana use so right from adaptogenic to anti inflammatory to anti oxidative to free radical scavenging it has multiple actions as well as multiple organ specific actions also if you see here you can see eyes is there then there is a joint specific rasayanas are there in ayurveda hair specific rasayanas are there so it can be used wisely under the supervision of a ayurveda physician only because nowadays the market is such that immunity is one of the most important marketed and uh, decorated word used to market ayurveda and the sayana drugs so that is not a good practice as an ayurveda practitioner we should be able to uh, guide which is good and which is bad to the patients now winding it up the preventive aspects of ayush advocacy can be in four domains one it acts as a barrier the practices like uh, nasya kavala etc that acts as barrier at the entry portals and uh, yoga pranayama meditations etc act as lessening the mental stresses and the uses of spices hot water etc maintains the gut lung axis symbiosis and the rasayana yogas judicious use of rasayana yogas can act as immunomodulators which ultimately leads to lesser chance of infection faster recovery rate and lesser convalescence and coming to the final quarter of this presentation that is the management strategies we have seen what are the dosha predominance what is the uh, strothoses involved based on that and the based on the symptoms understanding the common and the uncommon symptoms is the key because if you see one covid patient and you see other you don't sometimes even get any similarity between them some uh, sometimes he might be having only a fatigue sometimes he might be having just a loss of taste but when he tested he will be positive or sometimes he might be asymptomatic also so you will be if uh, he is tested positive you uh, are going to get two three types of patients that is asymptomatic patients mild to moderate symptoms patient and patients with severe symptoms and these patients will be with or without comorbidities and in different age groups so these are the points these are different things that should be kept in mind while treating covid patients so on symptom wise assessment i have told before that fever cough and fatigue are the three most common features of covid 19 as per who so suppose an uh, asymptomatic patients come patient comes and uh, he will be if you ask him you don't have any symptom but only thing is he is tested positive so in that cases the ideal scenario is you can give a prophylactic care because as per our pathogenesis there is a dosha dushti in that there is an evidence for that as per the test but the symptoms has not manifested that means it can be either due to bala of the patient is more than the vyadhi karana 
or the samprati has not attained a stage where it can manifest a disease or the causative factors, the virulence load is less. So he can at some point of time develop symptoms also. So with an exposure to some venjaga hedus, that precipitating factors, he can develop. So he should be given all the prophylactic cares that we are giving. And then if the patient is fever dominant, we can adopt jwara chikitsa, especially vada kapha jwara chikitsa or kapha vada jwara chikitsa, depending upon the symptom associated. And in cough dominant cases, you can go for kasa chikitsa. And usually in kasa chikitsa, you will be presenting, uh, the in cough dominant cases, it will be presented with upper respiratory tract infections. So the site is a little bit higher. And if the patient presents with shortness of breath, the line of treatment differs. It comes down to the lower respiratory tract specific treatment. Then it comes down to Shwasa Chikitsa. And in, if the patient is at a, uh, associated with so too much fatigue, that is one of the commonest factor seen in COVID-19 patients. And then we have to think in line of Raja Ekshma Chikitsa because that is a disease where we have classical symptoms where Ojo these all lectionas will be usually associated with Dajekshma and in chronic stages of fevers also. And in G, if a patient is having GI symptoms, then Ama Chikilsa, Aro Chikilsa, and principles from uh, Grahani Chikilsa can also be adopted as and when required. And uh, here you can see the less common symptoms is loss of taste or smell, nasal congestion, conjunctivitis. These can also be sometimes associated with uh, COVID-19 patients. And we can adopt our treatment line and change our treatment line based on that. So, how to select drugs in COVID-19 or a patient with this? So, the primary principle that we should adopt is the principle from Jura Chikutsa, that is Balam Yeknena Palaya, because Baladishtana Arogim Arogartam Kriyakam. So, all the things that we should do should be kept in mind with the bala of the patient, protecting the bala of the patient. So the formulation should be selected in such a way that it should not cause further problems to the patient. So it should be as per the age of the patient. And acne involved cases, if there is acne vitiation also, we should think uh, about the kalpanas that can be used. That is, in uh, Ashtangarda, it is told that Sharaju Nasa Varishtan, Mutra Takrani Shile, if there is a Mandagni associated with that, or there is a Agni Mandya. So the Kalpanas you should be given, uh, giving is not heavy Kalpana, that is heavy for digestion, like uh, Avalesh Kalpana, Chamanpras. You, uh, we used to take that, we used to give that Chamanpras is good for COVID, but it's not suitable for a patient if it is associated with Agni Mandya. And if Kasa is associated, cough like symptoms, then treatment procedures like uh, Bashpasveda. Dhuba, dhubana, dhubana and Vashpada, especially Dhubana, that is one of the speciality of Ayurveda. Here we use many types of drugs that are Rakshogna, that can influence your mucosal roots of the nasal cavity as well as the oral cavity, maintains the hy hygiene. And we have uh, in Kerala, there is a famous Abharajita Dhuba and the studies associated with that. It can prevent further bacterial infections and uh, further prevent the complications. So, likewise, if the patient is associated with CASA, you can adopt this. And if any Pythic involvement is there, ideally not to go for Sveda or Dhuva. So, based on the dosha associated with, the, with this and the symptoms, you can adopt. And the judicious use of Peya Kalpanas, Yusha and Paniya Kalpanas. For example, if a COVID patient with uh, Kapha predominance, he is having too much Kapha involved in that. So, then ideally not go for Peya because in the Jwarachik insight it is mentioned that Peya Kapam Vardaydi, Pangu Pamsushu Vishtagal. So in that kind of patient, ideally not. In Kerala, we give Kanji to almost all the fever patients. But it is not ideally suited for those patients with uh, rhinitis, running nose, etc. So it should be ideally prevented. If you are giving a Peya, it should be Samskrita with some kind of uh, thing that uh, reduces the Kledamsha of the Peya like Panchakola or Dashamula or some, uh, the ideal drug that is suitable. And in uh, patients with cough and uh, kapha involvement, then Yusha is the ideal choice. Mudge Yusha, like Kandagari Siddha Mudge Yusha or even 
plain mudugi usha can be given because they are kafahara in nature they are lekhana in nature they helps in reducing the kafa of the body and there are different pani kalpanas as i mentioned before uh, there are so many customizable chundi dhani ke chundi pya chundi and that they helps in vada varcho anlo manam if a patient has less appetite constipation associated vada varcho anlo manam you can give chundi and dhani ke pya if he is having gastritis amla pitta symptom then you can give dhani ke hima or similar type of, type of things if he is having predominantly respiratory tract problems or uh, respiratory issues then the jeera jeera ka kind of jeera varlam uh, that is given commonly and like that you can improvise these paniya preparations and uh, given for the patient especially more so in patients associated with less agni and select the proper kalpanas and yogas to strike the right dosha against the guna vikalpa diseases due to disease at different stages because as an ayurvedic physician you should always think in this manner there is a dosha drushti then there is an opposite at a particular degree so there is an opposite guna that can be attributed to that body to neutralize that it is like a lock and key system if you give the suitable guna a drug with a suitable guna exact guna it will strike the right thing like opening a key with a single right key and if you select a different or some type of other preparation then it takes time so based on that you have to strike the ideal kalpana you have to get the ideal yogas so it all depends upon which guna to give and how much to give so in the, uh, that principles that we get from jwara for example if a patient is vyadikshina post convalescence for suppose a patient is having covid 19 and in the post convalescence stage he is uh, vyadikshina and having mandak vyadikshina se mandak ni then it is the most ideal thing is to give ghee because he is already very much weakened with uh, weak weakened with the disease and the dosha predominance is different vada pitta environment so vada pitta vada pitta utare manda kafe the ideal scenario to give ghee so uh, likewise and then if a patient is having too much kafa environment then the kalpanas should be as told before shara asava arishta kalpanas that can be preferred and likewise not only yogas the kalpanas also play an important role so proper use of rasayanas is another key so there is a lot of complications or a lot of confusion going across india that you can take chamuprasha ayurveda can take chamuprasha there are some misinterpretations and some mis uh, guidance from the advertisements also so as an ayurveda community we should regulate that and we should tell that what is good for everybody everything is not good for everybody as a ideal scenario if you take chamun prasha it might be good for all the age groups but not suitable for those who are having less acne or those who are diabetic patients so you should advise other suitable rasayanas so there are uh, three four rasayanas that are commonly used now there is one is chamun prasha there is uh, other set of rasayanas there kushmanda rasayana is there shimula harita is there so if you see that why chamun prasha is most preferred is this is told in the context of rasayana vada adhi vikara sayana it can be used daily but other things that if you see agastya rasayana or uh, kushmanda rasayana and all they are told in the context of shatraja kasa and dashamula hayadegi in the case of shofa so they are little bit more disease specific so it should be administered only under the supervision of an ayurveda physician and there are so many single rasayanas like ashwagandha pipili guduchi bala etc that can be used judiciously more so some of the rasayanas like bhallata and pipali should only be taken under rasayana vidhi so we should educate the people in such a way that not all rasayanas are suitable for all the people because that can also put at a, put us on blame because somebody takes the wrong thing and uh, don't get the uh, desired uh, effect and then the whole blame will be coming on the ayurveda system so i would like to put it like this before uh, uh, selecting any rasayanas you should assess the patient for example with those three examples i will tell chavan prasha well and fine most of the age group can take but ideally not suitable for those with less acne and diabetes patient 
and uh, between in a casa patient if you come there are two if you have two options between agastya rasayana and kushmanda rasayana if you see the combinations kushmanda rasayana there is khanda is a khanda, preparation based on khanda and indicated in rakta pitta also and it is uras sandhana janana so if a patient having too much cough with hemoprasis and all that can be a option that can be the ideal option and uh, otherwise little bit kafana vanda then you can go for agastya rasayana likewise you have to select all the formulations all the combinations also then we can strike the right balance and reduce the cost of the treatment also so next government of india and ministry of ayush combined to release a national management protocol that is available in ministry of ayush website that can be adopted if necessary uh, it incorporates different uh, four target groups and uh, it highlights different uh, treatment that can be given for that so for guidance we can opt to that with uh, uh, our personal common sense to differentiate between what to give for who so bringing it down to these four strategies whatever we do will come under these four groups that is if there is a sheena dosha then you go for a brumana therapy if there is sama that is healthy or in covid 19 cases there is asymptomatic patients or healthy individuals you have to maintain it the strategy is for prophylaxis maintain it using suitable prophylactic procedures and then later two things that is vruthi you can go for shodhana and kopa we can go for shamana and the fourth that is a kopa avastha is usually associated with the covid 19 cases so most often than not shamana is the right choice for treatment rather than going for shodhana unless and until it is absolutely necessary then <clears throat> as a responsible healthcare professional the common message that you can give to the patients are respect your age and time zones we should educate the people for that respect your urges and body signals and maintain your gut health that is our responsibility to educate them and advise them to keep calm and active because the patient comes with us with lots of lots of stress we have to give them time and advise them to be calm and active and be prepared to take care of your own health this is the scenario that is going to happen in the future because the medicine medical the, if one more pandemic comes the second wave is about to come in uh, december 15 if the predictions are right so you have to be prepared like maintenance of immunity inside the body is like maintaining an ecosystem it does not come over a period of time as an ecosystem takes time to establish itself we have to make ready ourselves in such a way that it will not be affected soon so by proper dinacharya by proper ritucharya by proper dietary practices by proper medical advices we can inculcate the habit of developing immunity in the patients and last and not but the least the follow the guidelines followed by the authority time to time to conclude i would like to urge you to be future ready because covid 19 is just the beginning of the scenes and it is not the end also it is going on the second wave is expected so be ready for an opportunity and the second most important thing is document and publish because if you can see the articles i i have showed you is why i showed you is the importance of publications there was a case report Uh, that was the first of its kind in covid 19 and ayurveda so it got published that was its importance so whatever small things you can do document it if you cannot publish it that's well and good but you have to keep a document because when there is a time people ask for data you should be ready to produce that unless and until we should always remember that we believe we including i and you believe only in god and everyone else has to produce data to be believed so document it we the ayurveda community will get so many post covid convalescent cases for post covid associated complications you document it everybody will be getting cases document that because it will be a good data for the future and believe in our strength and principles don't uh, be ashamed of what we have we have to believe in our strength and principles because that has been keeping us going and that will keep us going 
and whenever necessary seek the help of other systems of medicine and don't feel shy in taking help because in some a very small uh, percentage of cases in de dealing with many diseases and in uh, acute cases or severe cases we need the help of other systems also so at times of help use that other systems and whenever treating a covid patient or monitoring post covid convalescence also it's ideal to use technologies like uh, using use of pulse oximeter using investigation techniques there is no harm in doing that because that is not associated with any system it is of the science so it is for the benefit of the people also so we should not be shy in using the uh, principles of uh, investigations so with this conclusion and a hope so with this thoughts and hope for, for a better tomorrow this you can see that the who is extending hands hands to uh, work together for the well being of the humanity and the hope for a better future i in my presentation namaste and once again thank all the organizers for uh, giving me an opportunity to share my thought and uh, i know this is late hours and apart from all the celebrations in this uh, ayurveda day and uh, they i hope this is the last presentation of its kind also in the day thank you so much for listening and all the best for the future thank you thank you sir ആർക്കെങ്കിലും ഒരുപാട് കമന്റ്സ് വരുന്നുണ്ട് നല്ല ക്ലാസ് ആയിരുന്നു പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് any doubt have any doubts or we we can discuss also because uh, many of you have experiences to share this can be used as a platform for that also endengilum samshayangal undengil audio on aaki chodikkam is not modifiable but we can keep away from that we have so much studies that uh, there are uh, multiple strains multiple type of covid viruses and in the second wave what is to be expected that also we don't know we cannot uh, play on the virulence of that virus aspect we can improve the health of the person uh, improve the health of the individual maintain our immune system increase our immune system in such a way that however potent the virus may be we can deal with them because if at all you get infected you can recover much faster and the post convalescent period will be less and you can your body will fight effectively against that for that you have to make your physiology well properly with proper dinacharya rudacharya with uh, associated with the maintenance of hygiene of your external orifices portals of entry so that is the key you have to follow and regarding reducing the virulence a uh, few things that ayurveda can do is practicing dhupana maybe the uh, vi viral load that approaches us if you do practices uh, regular dhupana and all may be reduced that comes in contact with us so otherwise we cannot play with the agent factor it keeps on changing the second episode can be a more fatal one or a minor one it depends but only thing that is modifiable is the host factor and that is what ayurveda is good at
സാറൊരു ക്വസ്റ്റിന് വന്നിട്ടുണ്ട് ഹിന്ദിയിലാണ് ഡോക്ടർ അഖിലേഷ് ചോദിച്ചിരിക്കുന്നതാണ് സാറത്തിന് ഓപ്പർച്യൂണിറ്റി ഹോനേക്ക് ബാത്തി ആയുർവേദ okay that is a very good question most of the ayurveda uh, fraternity will be having that question in your mind so i would like to put it like this in the end of my session i displayed the second part that is document and publish if you ask there are a uh, few practitioners over here and if some if you ask any practitioner across the country if uh, you have any experience in treating viral infections they will tell yes then if you ask where is the proof you don't have it that is the primary cause i will tell like i will put it like that because during this covid 19 pandemic our sta- our state uh, uh, ism department has come forward with so uh, one example i will tell the kerala state ism department has come forward with so many projects is doing well with so many uh, prophylactic projects at different levels but still it is uh, not coming into the limelight of covid 19 treatment aspect why so because we have started implementing it and uh, working on it after the onset of a particular maybe that's my opinion there may be difference of opinion after the onset of a particular thing so as i highlighted once the covid 19 started coming there is a case report so we need to be more prepared we need to be we need to show the world what we can actually do then only first we have to produce the data you will be thinking how as an individual how can i do that but as an individual one drop is there enough to start you start it you start documenting it then when a day come you will be ready otherwise when uh, for example if some something is if the government is taking a decision that if you show us proof that you had experience in treating that viral infections then we will allow so then you will be in a confusion that you don't you, you will tell that i will do that but you don't have the evidence that is one of the reasons and then the government policies has to do with that in between uh, there are uh, phases where ayurveda had a very uh pathetic situation but fortunately we have a good uh, leadership now which is in favor of ayurveda and at least take this covid as an opportunity to get data right um, make it a habit of documenting if you are not interested in publishing well and good but make it a habit of documenting small 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 things it will help us in the future to establish that we are here and we have to come to this. this is a era of social media so everybody even everybody don't roam about with books so you have to be available with your data in the world of internet accessible to everybody so then the demand comes that should be the ideal scenario we should keep on working there small speech small speeches documented articles published articles from every small contributions that will contribute to the growth of ayurveda and acceptance of ayurveda and it is in a phase of improvement and hope it will be good in the future sir mattoru question vandittunde dr ashish ne chesirikkunnathu any role for kabalam in covid prevention covid prevention ha. okay kabala that is uh, oil pulling is uh, mentioned as one of the advocacies among the uh, ayush advocacies that uh, was released by ministry of ayush so as a part of dinacharya is already advised in ayurveda to practice uh, kabala gandusha etc with uh, tila taila ideally and especially in the cold times tila taila is ideal uh, and if you want sarsha uh, taila can also be used and in kerala we practice it with coconut oil also so what it does is two things are there one it maintains the integrity of our oral mucosa maintains the proper mucosal secretions and prevents the organisms from entering our body or prevents the degree of organism entry into our body the second aspect is it prevents or avoids other secondary infections like bacterial infections 
which can superimpose the health or promote the complication of a COVID patient. So there are two aspects. And in Ayurveda, there is not only really Kavala with uh, Thaila, there are so many things. Madhu, Madhu, uh, Kwada is used for Kavala, Kshira is used for Kavala, based on therapeutic thing. And one exclusive chapter is dedicated in uh, Sutra Sana for Kavala Gandusha Vidhi. So therapeutically also we can use that. So as far as prevention of COVID is concerned, practicing regularly can maintain the physiology of your oral cavity, normal physiology, and normal mucosal secretion and normal balance. So it can, to some extent, prevent COVID. Sir, one question on it. Dr. Ashwadi, you can ask After pneumonia attack of COVID, is any problem to give lekhyas having much nictaguna for prevention, like seven Okay. After pneumonia infection? Pneumonia attack. After okay. pneumonia attack of COVID. Okay, for prevention. Okay, post, I think the question is like this. If a patient has COVID attack, due to uh, COVID attack, and he develops pneumonia, if I'm wrong, you can uh, correct that, and that patient develops pneumonia. Is it suitable for, to give lachias? So ideally, that's what I, I was telling. When you have a picture of that patient, it is usually when it is it affects the respiratory tract, it can manifest as kasa, it can manifest as shwasa. In if it manifests as pneumonia-like illness, then usually the lower respiratory tract infections is the possibility. So we have to adopt the principles of shwasa chikitsa. So you need more potent drugs. Usually in shwasa chikitsa, we won't prefer uh, this. Uh, Avalehas in the initial phases. It should be those drugs that uh, reduces the clayda of the body. So ideally, a combination like chavan prasha might not suit him. Once the symptoms are over, symptom once the patient is symptom free, once that phase of amatva or the clayda sabava or the pneumonia attack phase is over and the patient is well and fine, then he can be given that. But ideally, about uh, about chavan prasha, I would prefer agastya sayana for that. Or the Shamula Haridiki, which is more, more of a kind of uh, yoga suitable for Kapha Anubandha. And in pneumonia-like condition, that is Kapha as well as Pitta Anubandha is there. So, more than Avaleha preparations, you can go for uh, Kashaya preparations like Pathya Gustumbara Adi Kashaya that are indicated in Kapha uh, Kapha uh, Adi Or uh, um, depending upon the Kapha environment, you can go for Vyagra Adi also. Or even severe cases of pneumonia or uh, uh, Disney and all. Bhargi, the combinations with Bhargi, that is Bhargi Kanadi, that sort of combinations can be adopted. So, if possible, ideally to avoid lehe preparations in pneumonia cases. And once is okay, and once the acne is okay, then you can go for lehe preparations. If nasal strava is there, how will be the action of thylanesia? What, what? As nasal strava is there, how will it be the action of thylanesia? Okay. Nasal strava need not be there in all cases. And in uh, the chikilsa, kasa chikilsa and shwasa chikilsa, there are contexts where there is kasa, sapi, nasa. Then what type of dhuva, uh, vana, or nasya can be given? So ideally with uh, a patient with uh, running nose, it is not suitable to give thylanesia. So the ideal thing is that patient is having kapha, uh, kapha predominance, then the ideal thing is give, give him dhuban. If it is just a, a pradishaya-like thing, you can give for snaihike dhuma. Then it is too much kapha involvement, then you can go for uh, vairajanike dhuma. And in uh, running nose type phase, ideally no thaila nasya. You can go for other, more, other types of nasya that are uh, ruksha in nature. Or even Nase can be uh, told as uh, not indicated in running nose also, using that. Preferably not, uh, not to give that, go for Shavana Ushadis and Dhupana. That will be ideal. Sir, Dr. Ebin Chojiri Nana. Sir, can you explain how this Ayur mask work on a patient? Ayur mask? Ayur mask. Okay. <clears throat> 
ayurveda mask and uh, so many other concepts has uh, come forward during this covid time maybe the, uh, i have not used that but uh, uh, i'll uh, as per my opinion that is ayurveda mask is uh, the mask with uh, ayurveda ingredients so it acts as a layer that helps in improving the quality of air that uh, you inhale probably the uh, the same aspects of spices that is uh, if you having uh, the inhalation in the inhalation when you take the smell of the spices and all it can stimulate your uh, nasal mucosa and all that in enhances your secretion secretory functions of the mucosal layer and thereby the physi normal physiology is maintained and uh, otherwise it acts physio uh, as a physical barrier it acts as mask and that is the only thing i can find in that that is the smell of that spices that is that is what i told in the presentation regarding spices it can influence three senses that is your uh, taste nose and uh, your visual these three senses can be influenced by spices and this eye mask may be it may be using some herbs and all the smell and the potency of the drugs can influence that i am not sure regarding that because i have not used it ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഡിസ്ട്രിക്ട് ആയുർവേദ ഹോസ്പിറ്റലും എം എ ആറ്റിംഗ് ഏരിയ കമ്മിറ്റിയും സംയുക്തമായി നടത്തുന്ന വെബിനാറിന്റെ ചരിത്രത്തിലെ മറക്കാനാവാത്ത ഒരു ക്ലാസ് ആയിരുന്നു ഇന്നത്തെ ഡോക്ടർ കൃഷ്ണാവസ് ആന്റേത് ആയുർവേദ ശാസ്ത്രത്തിലും റിസർച്ചുകൾ നടന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുമ്പോൾ നമ്മുടെ ലോകത്തെ മുഴുവൻ നശിപ്പിക്കാനായി എത്തിയ കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ എന്ന മഹാമാരിയെ പോലും മാനേജ് ചെയ്യാൻ നമ്മുടെ ആയുർവേദ ശാസ്ത്രത്തിന് കഴിയാമെന്ന് മനസ്സിലാക്കുമ്പോൾ വളരെ സന്തോഷമുണ്ട് ആയുർവേദത്തിൽ കോവിഡിനെ വളരെ എളുപ്പത്തിൽ വളരെ നന്നായി ഡോക്ടർ കൃഷ്ണദാസ് സാർ ഇപ്പോൾ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ നന്നായിട്ട് അവതരിപ്പിച്ചു ഒരുപാട് പുതിയ അറിവുകൾ സാറിൻ്റെ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ നിന്ന് ലഭിക്കുകയുണ്ടായി ഞാൻ പറയാൻ വിട്ടു ഒരു പോയൊരു കാര്യമുണ്ട് ഡോക്ടർ കൃഷ്ണദാസ് സാർ പഠനകാലത്തിൽ തന്നെ ബെസ്റ്റ് ഔട്ട് ഗോയിങ് സ്റ്റുഡൻറ്റിനുള്ള അവാർഡ് ആയ ജീവക അവാർഡ് സാറിന് ലഭിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഞാൻ അത് പറയാൻ വിട്ടുപോയി പഠനകാലത്ത് തന്നെ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു അവാർഡ് വാങ്ങിക്കാമെന്ന് ഓർക്കുമ്പോൾ എനിക്ക് സാറിനെ പരിചയപ്പെടാൻ കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ എനിക്ക് അഭിമാനം തോന്നുകയാണ് മാത്രമല്ല ഇന്നത്തെ സാറിൻ്റെ ക്ലാസ്സിനെ കുറിച്ച് പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് എടുത്തു പറയേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല വളരെ നല്ലൊരു ക്ലാസ്സായിരുന്നു ഒരുപാട് അറിവുകൾ പുതിയ അറിവുകൾ ലഭിച്ചു ഒരുപാട് വളരെ നല്ലൊരു ക്ലാസ്സായിരുന്നു സാറിനെ കുറിച്ച് ഇന്ന് സാറിനെ ക്ലാസ് എടുക്കാൻ ലഭിച്ചത് തന്നെ നമ്മുടെ ഭാഗ്യമായിട്ട് ഞാൻ കാണുകയാണ് അപ്പോൾ സാർ നമുക്ക് ഇന്നത്തെ ക്ലാസ് വൈൻഡപ്പ് ചെയ്യാം സാറിന് ഇനിയും ഞങ്ങൾക്ക് ലഭിക്കുമെന്ന് ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു ഇനിയും കുറെ കണ്ടൻസിൽ പുതിയ ടോപ്പിക്കുകളായിട്ട് സാറ് വരുമെന്ന് ഞാൻ പ്രതീക്ഷിക്കുന്നു ഒരുപാട് പരിപാടികളുള്ള ദിവസമാണെന്ന് അറിയാം എല്ലാവർക്കും ആയുർവേദ ദിവസമാണ് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് എല്ലാ ആയുർവേദ സമൂഹവും ഓടി തളർന്നിരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു സമയം കൂടിയാണ് അപ്പൊ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒരു അവസരം തന്ന ഗവൺമെന്റ് ആരോഗ്യ ഡിസ്പെൻസറി വർക്കല വൈദ്യു സാറിനും അതിന്റെ ഭാരവാഹികൾക്കും എ എം ഐ ഐ ആറ്റിംഗൽ ഏരിയ കമ്മിറ്റി അശ്വതി എല്ലാവർക്കും സബിൻ എല്ലാവർക്കും ഒരിക്കൽ കൂടി നന്ദി താങ്ക് യു സോ മച്ച് താങ്ക് യു സാർ താങ്ക് യു